What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited because I picked up the new Nikon 14 to 24 2.8S lens for my Z cameras. And I know I said in the past I probably wasn't gonna get this lens, but after hearing so many good things about it, I really want to test it out for myself. So I wanna compare it in this video to the Nikon 14 to 24 2.8, the old version. And I also wanna compare it to the Nikon 14 to 30 F4, Kind of a little unfair with this test because I do plan on taking some night shots. I really want to see how well this handles coma and how good the corner to corner sharpness is. Now my old 14 to 24 is still a fantastic lens. It served its purpose for many years and probably around 85% of the work that I sell and my time lapses were done with this lens right here. So it's a great lens, but as technology improves, things are getting smaller, lighter, and sharper. I know size-wise, this is relatively comparable to the old one, but weight difference is pretty shocking. This is almost a pound lighter than this lens right here, and you can really feel the difference. I think this is around 2.2 pounds, give or take, and with the FTZ adapter, it's going to be a little bit heavier, and this comes in around 1.4, again, roundabout, and this uh, 14 to 30 is around one pound, so it's only a little heavier than this lens right here by less than half a pound, which is awesome because I thought this was going to be much heavier. So I'm really pleased that, you know, the weight that it is. And it does accept circular filters as well. Although I do plan on getting rectangular filters just because I think they handle the vignette a little bit better. They make, uh, I think Nisi makes a system for this as well as Lee filters. And um, they're around 100 millimeters versus this old one, which I have filters that are 150 millimeters. And you know, that's just added gear, added space that's taken up. And if I don't want to bring along, you know, the 100 millimeter filters, if I have to save space, I could definitely pick up a circular filter. Um, so I have that option as well, which is awesome. Now I'm not gonna get into the specs of each lens in this video, as there's plenty of write-ups and other videos out there that you could watch to get all those specs. I really just wanna do sample shots and compare them between these three lenses to help you if you, you know, if you don't know if you want to upgrade or if you are undecided between these two lenses and you're trying to figure out which one you should go with, hopefully these sample shots will help you figure that out. I really just want to pixel peep the sides and the corners, see how sharp they are wide open. And again, uh, it's going to be a little unfair. This is the F4 and these are 2.8. So at night, these are obviously going to be a little superior, but you know, we'll still compare all those shots and also take some daytime shots as well to compare these three lenses. So we're gonna jump onto the computer and get right into it. All right, so here we are on the computer side of things and I took all my test shots using the Nikon Z7 and these three lenses right here. And in some of my tests, I actually incorporated the 20 millimeter 1.8 S lens because I know somebody's gonna ask me how that compares in sharpness to the 14 to 24 2.8 S and the 14 to 30 F4 S. So let's jump right into it. The first set of images was taken for flare and sunburst. So I took all these at F16, with the first being the older 14 to 24 uh, with a Z mount adapter on my Z7. And you can see it creates a decent sunburst, but there are some flare artifacts right here. And that's to be expected with that big front bulbous element. Um, there's some discoloration too. Uh, sometimes that flare looks really nice in a picture and sometimes it actually can hurt you. There's instances where I want to get rid of it and trying to Photoshop out these artifacts could uh, definitely be a little tricky, especially because they start to discolor some of the surrounding area. So um, that's just something to, to keep in consideration. The next photo was taken with the newer 14-24 f2.8s lens and it creates a very nice sunburst right here and it handles the flare really well. There's some discoloration over here in this area but for the most part you don't have any crazy lens flare issues. Jumping over to the 14-30, again a very nice sunburst. There are a few artifacts up here up top. Um, I think the 14 to 24 handles the sun flare a little bit better, but overall a very nice job with the 14 to 30 as well. And last, I have the 20 millimeter 1.8s, and this also creates a nice sunburst. Uh, it doesn't handle the flare quite as good. You see a lot more discoloration down here, uh, a couple artifacts, but still a lot better than the 14 to 24, the older version. So as expected, these newer Z lenses are going to handle sunbursts and flares uh, much better than its predecessors. 
Now before we test these lenses for sharpness, I just want to show you guys the difference between 24 and 30 millimeters. So here is 24 millimeters and this is 30. So 24, 30, and I can do a side-by-side -side comparison as well. The 14 to 30 is a great walk around lens and you get that little extra reach. So if we zoom in here on this house, and I'm at 300%, you can see it's just punched in a little bit more. Both of these were taken at f4. This is with the newer 14 to 24 2.8s, and this is with the 14 to 30 f4s. Um, so they're both really sharp at f4, and again, we're at 300%, so we're really pixel peeping this. All right, so let's jump into sharpness tests with the night sky first. All right, so first let's start off with the 1428, the old version, versus the new 1428S version. So let me just grab the S photo and hit compare. And we'll zoom in at the middle here. And you can see that they're both very sharp, even at 2.8. It's a little softer on the older version, but not by much. Um, it's just a great lens, and even for how old it is. And as we start to drift over towards the corner and the sides, you can see that the older version starts to get softer and um, the stars are stretching out a little bit more versus the new 14 to 24 2.8s. Um, this still looks really good even towards the corner. Let me go up here. Yeah, so we're starting to get a little astigmatism in the old version. And uh, even at 2.8, there's a slight astigmatism on this star, but it's really not that bad. And you can see the closer we get to the corner, the older 2.8 just gets softer and softer. Um, the new version also handles coma really well. You can see we have a little fringing right here, and the old version we do not. So uh, yeah, it's really impressive at 2.8 how sharp this new 14 to 24 2.8s is. Let me just zoom out here. Let's check the other side. Jumping over to this side, we could see again the 14 to 24 2.8s is sharper. A little bit of star stretching that might be from the rotation of the Earth. I kept um, the shutter speed at 8 seconds, which is pretty short, so it should be very minimal star trailing, even at 300% zoomed in. But uh, we could see how elongated the stars are on the older version versus the new version. Alright, so let's zoom out. Close out of that. Let's stop down the old version to f4 and compare it to the 14 to 30 f4. So I'm gonna grab that. And here is the 14 to 30 f4 on the right, and on the left is the older version at uh, f4. So let me zoom out and just go right to the middle first. And we can see that the 14 to 30 is slightly sharper in the middle not by much though and we'll work our way towards the sides so even stop down it's getting softer on the older 14 to 24 versus the newer 14 to 30 f4 it's just sharper uh, even towards the corners and the sides and the newer 14 to 30 also handles coma very well and I don't see much astigmatism on these stars, so it's doing a fantastic job. Now just remember one thing though, this is an F4 lens, and I did photograph this at uh, near Barnegat Light in New Jersey, so there's still a decent amount of ambient light in the sky. When you go out to really dark areas out in the Midwest, uh, this lens is going to struggle at f4. You're really going to have to crank up the ISO, and that's going to degrade the sharpness and quality of the image. So now what I want to do is compare the newer 14 to 24 at 2.8 versus 
the 14 to 30 at f4. All right, so on the left is the 14 to 24 28s at 2.8 versus my right, which is the 14 to 30 f4 at f4. So let's zoom in here on the middle. And it's really hard to tell. They're both very sharp, um, almost equal. Obviously, there's a little more noise in the f4. This was shot at 2.8. And I did have to increase the exposure a little bit just to kind of make them match a little bit better. But um, the sharpness of the stars is still there, even though you're probably seeing a little more grain and noise on this image. But they're both really sharp in the middle. It's hard to tell the difference. Let's start going over towards the side. It looks like it's getting a hair softer on the newer 14 to 24 28s versus the 14 to 30 f4 but not by much it's still really really impressive at 28 that this is almost as sharp as the 14 to 30 at f4 and I keep on going further towards the corner there they're both doing a fantastic job um, like I said even at 28 this is really really good um, it's almost identical to the f4 maybe a hair softer but i think it's handling the stigmatism and coma a, a little bit better too you can see this star right here is stretched out versus this one it's not as stretched out um, yeah really impressive and as we get further up to the top, you can see the stars are stretching a little bit more on the 14 to 30 than they are on the 14 to 24 28S. Let's check the right side. All right, so on this side, pretty much the same, a uh, little bit of star stretching, but not too bad. That could be a little bit of the lens, a little bit of the rotation of Earth, probably a little combination of both. Let's stop down the 14 to 24 28S to F4 and then take a look. So let me grab that photo next. All right, so on the left now is the 14 to 30 F4, and on the right is the 14 to 24 at F4. So they switched, just so you guys are aware. So let's start in the middle again. And let me just scroll over here towards Orion's belt. And you can see that the stars are just ever so slightly sharper on the right side here. This is the 14 to 24 2.8S at F4. So it's just a hair sharper than the 14 to 30 F4. Let's work our way towards the side. Yeah, they look very similar. And just like it was at 2.8, the stars are just a little more circular on the 14 and 24 2.8s. So both these lenses are really fantastic. However, you know the 14 to 24 2.8s comes with a hefty price tag. You could actually buy the Nikon 14 to 30 f4 and also get a compact lightweight star tracker like the move shoot move or the ioptron and it'll still be less money than if you buy the 14 to 24 2.8 s and all you have to do is take a nice clean picture of the foreground and then track your starry night sky and then blend the two together and that's just an option for those that don't want to spend the money on the 14 to 24 2.8 s lens because the 14 to 30 is still really really sharp and if you have that on a tracker it'll allow you to gather in more light and that way you could capture you know the Milky Way a little bit easier than if you were to crank up the ISO. So let's close this out. Um, I want to show you guys the 14 to 24 28 versus the 20 millimeter at 1.8 and at 2.8. So here's the 20 millimeter at 1.8. Let me grab my 14 at 2.8 and compare the two. All right, so let's zoom in here in the middle the 20 millimeters on the left and my 14 28s is on the right and it looks like the 14 28s is a little sharper versus the 20 millimeter at 1.8 so i think that's to be expected just because when you're shooting wide open uh, lenses tend to get a little softer 
and let's work our way towards the side you know this is still a fantastically sharp lens and I want to see how it looks stopped down at 2.8 compared to the 14 because I think they'll be a lot closer in sharpness but it's still very impressive at 1.8 it handles coma very well uh, let's scroll up towards the corner the stigmatism is a little more pronounced at 1.8 which is uh, pretty common with like 1.4s and 1.8 lenses you can see you get like the little bird effect you don't really have to deal with that with the 14 to 24 2.8s so that's just another thing to consider but the 20 millimeter 1.8 s lens is still fantastic especially compared to its predecessors uh, this thing is really sharp and we're going to check it out stop down at 2.8 so let me grab the next one again the 20 millimeter is going to be on our left and this time it's stopped down to 2.8 versus the 14 2.8 s on the right let's zoom in here again starting in the middle both very sharp it's very hard to even tell a difference um, I think what I'm noticing is the stars are a little bit bigger and again that's because this is 20 millimeter versus 14 and let's start moving our way towards the sides Twenty millimeter is doing a better job now that I stopped it down to two eight. They're pretty much on par with each other. Again, it's really hard to tell them apart as far as sharpness goes. Um, I want to see if some of the stigmatism went away as we scroll up here. Yeah, it definitely started to fix some of that. You know, the stars are not quite as perfectly round as the fourteen, but still really, really good. I don't really see much coma. Let's go over towards the right side. A little bit of stretching, but not too bad. Yeah, the 20 millimeter looks much better now that I stopped it down to 2.8 um, as far as sharpness goes compared to the 14 2.8. Both of these are fantastic lenses, that's why I don't plan on getting rid of either of them. Um, I am going to sell off the 14 to 30 f4 and my older 14 to 24 2a, but as far as these lenses, I think they're fantastic for certain scenarios, and that's why I'm going to keep them both. Uh, you you kind of have to figure that out what's more important to you, having that 1.8 and it being a nice sharp prime lens or having the flexibility between the 14 and 24, but you're going to carry around a little extra weight. Um, I, I don't really see the weight of the 14-24 being that bad now that I have it. Uh, I thought it was going to be a lot heavier, but it's really, uh, you know, a pound and a half, a little less than a pound and a half, really isn't too bad. So you really can't go wrong with either lens because they're both really sharp and do a fantastic job, especially if you're into night photography. The next test is going to be with a brick wall, and I'm going to photograph it at the longer end, you know, at 24 and 30 millimeters, and just compare the three lenses. I didn't do one with the 20 millimeter, but you get the general idea with this lens compared to the 14 to 24, especially if you're into night photography. All right, so here we are with some brick wall shots. Now I took these at 14 millimeters and also on their longest end, so 24 and 30 millimeters. And since we just did some wide angle shots at 14, I'm gonna show you guys what they look like on their longer end. So let's start off with the old 14 to 24 at 2.8 and 24 millimeters versus the newer version. So let's compare those two. Well, let me select that. And we'll start off in the middle. And as you can see, the S version here on the right side is sharper compared to the older version. And let's start scrolling over to the bottom corner since I did the top corners um, on the stars. And just like the wide angle versions, um, it's starting to get softer and a little more smeared on the older 14 to 24. And the newer 2.8S is looking nice and sharp, even in the corners. So that looks really good. Let's zoom out. And we'll just check over here really quick. And as to be expected, it is soft on the older version compared to the new version. 
Now since we know that the older version just isn't as sharp as the 14 to 30 or the 14 to 24 S, I'm not going to show you guys any more shots of that. I just want to show you guys a comparison between the uh, 14 to 30 at f4 versus the 14 to 24 at 28. Now I tried to get the 14 to 30 at 24 millimeters. I think I was at like 23.5, but uh, you get the general idea. So let's zoom out here. On the right is the f4, and on the left is 24 at 28. It's hard to determine which one is sharper. They're both very good here in the center. Maybe a slight edge to the f4. Looking at these bricks right here, it looks just a tad sharper. And again, this one's at 2.8, and this one is at f4. So uh, I would expect it to be a little bit sharper. But they both look really, really good. Let's work our way towards a corner. And towards the corner, you can see that the F4 is starting to shine a little bit better. It's starting to get a little bit soft on the Nikon 14-24-2.8S. And that's because it is wide open. But still, this is very sharp, especially at 2.8. Looks pretty good over here. Let's check the other side. Yep, as you can see, it's still sharper on the F4, but uh, not by much. So let's zoom out. Now let's compare both the S lenses at F4. On the right here is the 14 to 30, and you can see at F4 it has a pretty strong vignette compared to the 14 to 24 at F4. Let's zoom in here in the middle. They both look really good. Again, it's hard to determine which one is sharper. I think there's a slight edge with the 14 to 24 um, at f4 with sharpness. Just looking at it, there's just ever so slightly a little more detail. Let's work our way towards a corner. All right, they both look really good. Um, it's hard to tell. It almost looks like the F4 version is slightly sharper towards the sides. But again, it's it's really close. Let's go to the bottom right. They're really close. It's hard for me to determine the winner between the two. I would say the 14 to 24 has a slight edge. It looks sharper on this side, but it was weird. It was almost like the 14 to 30 was a little bit sharper on the left side. So um, it is what it is. They're both fantastic lenses. And obviously with the 14 to 24, you get the extra stops of light when shooting the night sky. But um, yeah, stop down at F4. They're both really, really excellent lenses. All right, so that's going to conclude this lens test, and you really can't go wrong with either one of the S lenses, the 14 to 24 28 or the 14 to 30. They are both really fantastic with corner to corner sharpness. And again, if you can't afford the 14 to 24, look into getting a star tracker for the 14 to 30. That's going to help you out tremendously to gather in more light when photographing the Milky Way. You will have to do a few extra steps to blend it with your foreground, but it's totally worth it. Uh, hopefully this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. Take care. Bye-bye.